Hello everyone, welcome to Pediatrics and Neonatology. This video is about hypertelorism, recognizing the sign and establishing a differential diagnosis. Hypertelorism refers to a widely spaced eyes and by definition, the interpupillary distance is increased. A clinical impression of hypertelorism can be created by epicanthic folds, by a depressed nasal bridge or by telecanthus in which the inner canthus is displaced laterally. The inner canthus being the meeting point of the upper and lower eyelids on the medial side of the eye. A useful clinical guide is to assess whether an imaginary vertical line through the lacrimal punctum actually overlaps the iris. Should this be the case, then there is telecanthus. Thus, once first clinical impression of the hypertelorism need to be more carefully assessed for possible confounding factors. And once satisfied that the patient does indeed manifest hypertelorism, the purpose of further examination is to evaluate the likely significance of this confirmed clinical sign. A mild degree of hypertelorism often with associated widow's peak may be familial and benign. Widow's peak is a descending V-shaped point in the hairline in the middle of the forehead. In terms of syndromic associations, the presence of a vertical groove of the nasal tip suggests the diagnosis of frontonasal dysplasia, while craniosynostosis and a nasal tip groove are consistent with craniofrontonasal dysplasia. Now, hoarseness of the voice should prompt questioning with respect to strider, a history of new natal feeding difficulty or aspiration. These represent possible pointers to an underlying laryngeal cleft and cause the clinician to examine for hypospadias, these being the cardinal features of Opis G syndrome. Now, Opis G syndrome is an inherited condition that affects several structures along the midline of the body. The most common features are wide spaced eyes and effects of the larynx, trachea or esophagus and this cause breathing problems and difficulty swallowing. There are two different forms of Opis G syndrome. First is X-linked recessive syndrome which is also known as type 1 and autosomal dominant syndrome which is type 2 Opis G syndrome. However, both these types result in common physical deformities, although their pattern of inheritance may differ. Now, being an X-linked disorder, asymptomatic mothers may show mild clinical features. Now, in hypertelorism, in the context of significant developmental delay in a male and increasing facial coarseness, which is best seen on serial photographs, with gathering prominence of the lips Thoughts of coffin lorry syndrome would be justified. coffin lorry syndrome is a rare genetic disorder characterized by intellectual disability, abnormalities of the head and facial area, large soft hand with short thin tapered fingers, short stature, and various skeletal abnormalities. Characteristic facial features may include an underdeveloped upper jaw bone, that is maxillary hypoplasia an abnormally prominent pro, down slanting eyelid folds or palpebral fissures, widely spaced eyes that is hypertelorism, large ears and or unusually thick eyebrows. Skeletal abnormalities may include abnormal front to back and side to side curvature of the spine that is kyphoscoliosis and there is also unusual prominence of the breastbone that is sternum and this is known as pectus carinatum. Many geneticists point to the frequent observation of an accessory transverse hypothenar crease in this patient with coffin lorry syndrome. Now, coffin lorry syndrome is caused by changes or mutation in the RPX6KA3 gene and it is inherited in an X-linked dominant pattern. Males are usually more severely affected than the females. Now, many early cases of a condition known as alpha thalassemia mental retardation syndrome of the X-linked type that is ATRX syndrome were confused with the coffin lorry syndrome, the clinical features being very similar. 
Now, ATRX syndrome is also known as alpha thalassemia X-linked intellectual disability syndrome or non-deletion type. It is an X-linked recessive condition associated with a mutation in the ATRX gene. Males with this condition, ATRX syndrome, tend to be moderately intellectually disabled and have a physical characteristics including coarse facial features, microcephaly, small head size, hypertolerism, widely spaced eyes, a depressed nasal bridge, a tented upper lip, and an inverted lower lip. Mild to moderate anemia associated with alpha thalassemia is a part of this condition. Now, females with this mutated gene have no specific signs or features, but if they do, they may demonstrate squid X chromosome inactivation. Now, in cases of mild developmental delay, especially if associated with short stretcher, the hypertelorism may be associated with Arscock syndrome. Arscock syndrome is an inherited disease that affects a person's height, muscles, skeleton, genitals and appearance of the face. Intellectual development may also be affected. About 20% of the people with Ascox scott syndrome have genetic changes in the FGD1 gene. The cause in other affected individuals is unknown. The condition is inherited as an X-linked recessive pattern. Now, Arscock syndrome is confirmed clinically by observing the digits for brachydactyly, that is, short fingers. And this is associated with mild cutaneous syndactyly, that is, webbing of the skin between the fingers. In this patient, the scrotum will generally have a shawl configuration. Now, some important investigations to consider in a patient with hypertelorism. First is DNA mutation analysis. It is indicated for ATRX and coffin lorry syndrome. Hemoglobin H inclusion bodies on staining with freshly constituted brilliant crisile blue is a good screening measure for ATRX and it identifies 90% of the cases. Skeletal survey in Arscock syndrome often shows multiple epiphyseal dysplasia of mild degree. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health related videos.